Ah! Yeah, somebody hit the button. So I guess I'm making a video. So anyway, I saw some video titled funny, so I said, oh yeah, this ought to be a good one. Morality is not objective, but who the fuck cares? Defending champ guy. So we'll play that video. Um, <clears throat> haven't seen it yet, but just know how stupid it's going to be. I mean, objective is the same thing as saying, what's the truth? Objective is just a standard for acquisition of the truth. You have two choices, right? You can judge something based on bigotry, or you can judge something based on information, knowledge, complete context. So it's like the difference between a complete context and an incomplete context, right? Personal, like, I never saw Ted Bundy do anything wrong, versus objective which would be oh look at the newspaper <laughs> yeah he was convicted of multiple murders multiple times yeah you see that's the difference so you're either smart reality like a complete picture of reality versus a incomplete picture of reality and this idiot thinks we should live our lives based on our incomplete personal um, perspective and don't read any newspapers, and don't do any extrapolating intellectually, imagining, <laughs> you know, about reality. Because you haven't been to the end of the earth, you can't know there is an end to the earth. You know, this kind of not. You haven't been to the moon, therefore there is no moon. Yeah, right. You're an idiot. All right, so we'll play with this idiot. All right, so let's just read his little diatribe here. It's about consequences. <clears throat> no, it's about understanding. Being manipulative with logic and trapping into guilt and empathy. Well, again, you don't need to do that. But again, guilt and empathy are exactly the crap you're saying that has some kind of value. Where I'm arguing those are biases. That's not. You can't call anything that relies on guilt and empathy objective morality that is by definition not objective because our empathy and our sense of attachment um, our preferences are intrinsically bigoted like your sexual desire or your food taste they're intrinsically bigoted can't be objective may help in certain situations <clears throat> to influence the consequences you desire, whatever that means. But if we are talking about truth, the whole objective morality thing is a total joke. Well, again, so he's associating objective morality with empathy and guilt. He's associating objective understanding with subjective emotion, which obviously is so freaking stupid. That's a total joke, asshole. However, this does not mean that I will react any more or less severely or effectively to stop actions that I personally find to be reprehensible. So that means if there's two people standing on the bridge, right, cute little girl and fat smelly man, you'll just decide to push fat smelly man off if you have to push somebody off because you want to get laid. Right? No, you will apply no logic and recognize things for what they are, you'll see them based on what your favorite color is? Huh? Retard. Incredibly retarded. I just watched a video by a channel um, called Think Vegan, and she made a video about moral relativism, and this is a subject that I've talked about more than anything um, over the years on YouTube. Um, Guess I've missed that. But anyway, continue. And I don't know why I always go back to it. It's something that I find um, interesting, I guess, but also kind of annoying because it's kind of it's very it's the thing that I see happening most in life where people um, it just connects back to the core of most people's illogical beliefs. <laughs> right, you don't have any of those. <laughs> um, the way they handle um, morality and um, you know, either side, people who think it's objective or subjective or whatever. Um, no, it's really not a whatever thing. I mean, it is pretty much the definition of between stupid and intelligent, 
right? I mean, stupid things don't understand that they're psychological, um, subjective uh, sensibilities are shit. You have to know that they're shit, that they're absolutely arbitrary, that they have nothing to do with anything besides evolutionary purposes. They don't have anything to do with any higher mind. I, you probably don't get that. Anyway, in her video, she's talking about um, an example she gives, you know, why morality needs to be objective or it is objective. You know, you see someone, uh, you see a member of ISIS raping a child and, uh, you know, if, if you believe more, morality is relative, you know, how do you do anything? And then, I mean, right there, it's just obviously, just from that point, it just makes it makes no sense. What do you mean, how you do it? You, you can you can call morality anything. You could call you could say morality is a joke. I could say no one should ever be moral, and I could still shoot the ISIS guy in the head if that's what I do. Well, I mean, really, but the, the whole idea that your your argument is that there's some sort of reason why would we depend on some sort of Oh, yeah, I'll just happen to do the right thing. It'll just happen. It doesn't require any thought. It doesn't require any analysis. I'll just automatically, under the right circumstance, do the ethically correct thing. So on the lifeboat, I won't have to think about anything, right? There's 40 people trying to get into a boat that holds 20 people. So I won't do any thinking. Right? I'll just say, let it happen, and whatever happens is okay, because I'll just do the right thing somehow. I won't have to wonder, well, okay, that guy's 95 years old and he has cancer, and yeah, okay. All right. Shark food. No, no, no analysis necessary to find the right answer. Bullshit, idiot. The truth about life is that there's just... Uh rewards uh, and punishments. There's just <clears throat> well, whatever. No, there's feelings, idiot. You want to call them rewards and punishments from what? A crocodile? A crocodile has decided, right? Evolution is as, as dumber than a crocodile. But let's just say evolution was as smart as a crocodile, which it is not. But let's just give it super intelligence, and it's all the way up to crocodile now. And you're saying, the crocodile knows best. It will reward and punish you correctly, and therefore you just be obedient to the rewards and punishments you feel, and that will tell you what the right thing to do is. No. Sorry. Not even motherfucking close at all. Consequences for your actions. Now you can, you can make up your, your own moral system and kind of give out little goals. Uh, no, no, it's not making up your own moral system to recognize that we are not pens, okay? Conscious, sentient organisms have a capacity to have experiences. And experiences have value. I'm having them. I know they're valuable. I can feel their value. It's all over them, these experiences. And when I'm having them, it's valuable. And when somebody else is having them, they're valuable. And when somebody else is having them, they're valuable. That's the core of what you call objective morality. It's just a recognition of what does have value. What creates value? Well, the thing that creates value is the generating experiential mind. As something having sensations is creating value by having the sensations. You can't understand that? You can't understand that is the core of value? You think something else is valuable? Stupid fuck. Stars or deliver the punishment uh, or reward based on how moral you think someone is. Or if you have live in a society and you have laws, there's obviously going to be uh, punishments for going against those laws. But... Um, it's all, it's all kind of irrelevant, this idea of morality. <laughs> yeah, it's irrelevant. It's just so fucking stupid. No, it's consequential. We have a law against dumping dioxin into the Great Lakes. Why? Because it'll cause a hell of a lot of conscious negative experience. That's why. All right, and most laws 
are intended to do something like that, okay? It's to create some sort of efficiency in our interaction so we're not getting hurt by each other constantly. Now, some of the laws are idiotic and inane based on biblical dogmas and nonsense, and everybody who has a brain knows that, yeah, we ought to get rid of that shit. But most of the laws have some kernel or core of some valuable recognition that it's either harmful to yourself or to somebody else to engage in this stupid activity. Uh, is it subjective or is it objective? It's how you handle things. Now, in the video you talk about you like dealing with people who believe morality is objective because if you don't believe that morality is objective, essentially... If you don't mean, I mean, look, use the word correctly, okay, and just say absolute or real, okay? I mean, objective can't be, you can't find flaw with the concept of objective because it just means a better perspective. Objective perspective is essentially the absolute best perspective. It is basically saying the complete, informed, unbigoted, unbiased perspective, that's what objective means. You have a point of view that is not corrupted, all right? And clearly, it's no point of view if it's not informed. So, I mean, although objective doesn't require, um, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it's not implicit in the word, let's say, explicit in the word, that um, the perspective would be informed, it's a logical necessity. Because obviously, uh, ignorance is a subjectivizing concept. The more ignorant you are, the less um, complete your understanding, the more it's going to be biased in a direction. I mean, can you understand that? If uh, she doesn't believe, um, she says, if you don't believe that morality is objective, how do you have a discussion about, you know, just whatever you say? Yeah, real. Right. Again, so if you don't believe morality is real, that there's a real value consequence, that it really matters when a woman gets raped, brutally and killed, that this is a real experience that happens in a real universe and it really happens and it's really bad. Yeah, if you don't believe that, then you're a fucking idiot. You're so fucking stupid. You're dumber than a fucking crocodile. Knows, you know, because it's subjective. But it's the exact opposite, really. Um, now, first of all, of course, it's a person, uh, it goes person to person basis on how people treat, you know, their beliefs and what, how that actually. Um, yeah, yeah, right. We all get to make it up somehow. No, we don't all get to make up the fact of whether or not I, I, uh, whether I, if I'm tortured, whether it means nothing. I'm saying, no, you're not allowed, in my opinion. To say my being tortured doesn't mean anything. I'm saying no way. I don't find that an acceptable perception. If you're going to perceive me that way, I'm going to perceive you as an enemy and a threat. You know, translates into real life action. But really, someone who says morality is objective is saying they know this is morality. Here is the objective criteria, and then you just you know you take the steps and you, you can find the answer. Yeah, again, it really isn't, the logic isn't that hard to do. You are a sentient being, you have experienced sentience, you know what kind of states of being are pleasant and unpleasant, you know what torture is, you basically have an outline of it that's consistent from person to person. You don't find that other people say, gee, I love being crushed in a building. I love when my building gets hit by an airplane and I have to jump out the window. You don't hear anybody say shit like, I love having cancer. You don't hear anybody say that. So you know there's a certain consistency between what they consider to be torturous or unpleasant sensations and what you understand to be pleasant and, and enjoyable sensations. So there's no real problem here in figuring out that it's a good thing that people be in a comfortable state and it's a bad thing for them to be in an uncomfortable state. And that's really, really, really not very hard to see. You don't even have to do the tiniest bit of research or observation in the world to understand that it's not good when cats get run over on the street, or it's not good when people get uh, hit by cars, and it's not good when drunk drivers kill little kids, and it's not All these things aren't good. You can understand that. It's not really all that fucking complicated, and you can understand it at that there's no reasonable way you could ever make this a good thing. Little kid in China walks across the street, gets run over by 
26 different cars. There's no way in any way in the universe in any kind of configuration you can make it into where you can make that into a good thing. Because it's not a good fucking thing. Uh, that's probably people who believe that morality is objective usually are much more um, sure and um, you know morally righteous and easily you know, offended because you go against their objective moral code, right? Um, if you believe well, again, you're not going to make any distinctions, okay? You're going to say to me, you're going to you're going to imply anyway in this statement that somehow religious people have objective morality when they don't. They didn't do any objective thinking to acquire their understanding of right and wrong. They read a narrow-minded, closed-minded, bigoted, biased book. You can't call a dogma objective morality. Now, you can call them fundamentalists or absolutists. You can call them lots of other things, and then you can qualify distinctions between different kinds of absolutists, like rational absolutists versus irrational absolutists. But at least be fair to the conversation here. It's just idiotic to say that all of people who have something called objective morality are believe that morality is an absolute truth to be discovered in the universe. It actually exists and we can understand it logically. We can understand right and wrong does exist. There is good and bad solutions to problems. There are better solutions. That's a fact. Okay, it's they're not all equal. All action is not the same. All reactions are not equal. No, there's superior ones, there's efficient ones, there's, there's best ones. And that's just a truth that's out there in reality and we can know the answer. That's the statement. And we can get there logically, not with a dogmatic book. But yeah, don't be fair. Don't make those rational distinctions between who you're talking to and who you're talking about. Just throw Einstein in with the imbeciles and say they're all the same thing. Well, they're not the fucking same thing. The morality is subjective. <clears throat> you actually, more, li more than likely, if you truly believe morality is subjective, you have an open ear and are willing to actually take in new ideas. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But what new idea is there? There's not going to be any new idea that's going to make it possible for somebody to say, yes, go ahead, torture. Torture is the same thing as bake them a cake or torture them. I can't tell the difference. Well, that's not going to happen, imbecile. So, I mean, new idea about what? Again, what's, what do you think the new idea is going to be? I mean, we've been here for thousands of years, you know, writing shit down. You don't think we have written it down enough times? Suffering be bad and K? Dying sucks and K? I mean, fuck. Um, now, that being said, it's possible, of course, there's different degrees of open-mindedness and closed-mindedness among people who would claim to be uh, moral objectivists or moral relativists or whatever. That's going to that's gonna vary. Yeah, yeah it's going to vary based on how complicated you think existence is, right? It's, if you think it's complicated and there's quantum bibble babble and there's ghosts and there's spirits and there's gods, well, yeah, then you got a big mess to clean up. But if you just understand what evolution is, that we have a sentient capacity because it was a way of manipulating us, um, and that's what our brain is basically doing, is just creating a problem inside of our brain called feelings, and having our brain think about how to solve the feeling problem. Because it can't make us solve problems in the real world. It can only make us solve problems we create in our own brain. It's just the way it works. Value doesn't exist in the world. It can only exist in our heads, okay, through this mechanism of having a feeling. But just in, in this whole hypothetical theory thing about what people might be like, it would, it would, if anything, it would make more sense for the relativists to be more open to hearing new ideas and trying to come... The relativists? I mean, so who are you talking to? The relativists? You just said that that's just wrong, right? You made a mistake or something? You mean the objectivists? You mean the people who think there's a truth? So why don't you just call them truthers or call them something else? Or moral truthers? Yes, I think there's a moral truth. There's a right answer to every problem. There's a writer answer. There's a best answer to every fucking problem. There's a, the shortest way to get to the solution, the most efficient way to get to the solution. That's the truth. To um, 
a conclusion based on complex situations rather than an objective for us who already have it figured out. Um, Again, who says they already have it figured out? If you have the lifeboat situation, all I, all the only argument being made by, um, I would argue, objectivist would be that you don't let your subjectivity decide. You don't sit there and say, okay, well, that one's my cousin. So, yeah, it's automatically in. It doesn't have to pass any tests. Yeah, that's an obvious bias. Okay, so, yeah, you have to have a fair standard for who gets in the fucking boat and you can figure that much out intellectually and then you have the hard problem the hard job of trying to figure out what the future consequences is of what you're doing in the present and so it's not going to be easy no one's saying this is just you just read the fucking book that's the that's the bible thumpers again they're not objective bible thumpers are not objectivist idiot they don't have an unbiased perspective. They have exactly the opposite. They have a completely biased perspective. But moving along, yeah, I mean, the idea that you're going to have a conversation with this ISIS guy and be like, oh, you know what? You just never thought of it this way. Uh, it's unrealistic. And you even say something, uh, you, she, I don't know who I'm talking to, but uh, in the video it says... Um, she says in the video that, yeah, uh, you're not going to convince, you're not going to probably convince him through logical reason. But that's the, re the reality of life is. Well, who, who knows? But anyway, I don't even know what that has to do with the, the, the question. The question was, is if you can't figure out that what's, what's happening is bad, you're too fucking stupid. You're dumber than a crocodile. Is that, um, there's. You, know, you do things and there's consequences for them. And yes, we can have these moral arguments and the consequences change based on the reasoning. But one other thing that she says in this video is like, oh, she, she doesn't like the idea that might equals right. Uh, no, no one really, even, I mean, some people might put forth that, you know, they just, they, they'll emphasize how strength is important and all that stuff. And, but it, no one really is saying that might equals right. Uh, I don't think that anyone's really saying that. What they're saying is, is that's just what it happens. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah, well, that's just such the lamest. I mean, it's even dumber than saying might equals right is to say it is what it is. I mean, that's even more of a cop-out. Um, the, the point really is, is that might has absolutely nothing to do with integrity or decency or understanding of efficiency. So obviously, just because something's bigger than something else doesn't mean it is better than something else. So, I mean, that logic is just so fucking obvious. So, once again, we're back to what are we going to let make the decisions in the world? Are we going to let stupid things, stupid forces, uh, our emotions and our size and our capacities decide what happens? Or are we going to logically analyze the circumstance and recognize that the thing to be cherished, the thing of value here, the kernel of value, is the experience of sentient organisms? Because the reality is, when you want to put forth these ideas through a conversation or logic, you still want there to be consequences. Uh, unless you want to just control everyone's behavior just to... Uh, uh, news, news flash, you're already being controlled. The, the question is, are you going to be controlled by crocodile? Or are you going to be controlled by the best humans can muster? The, 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 the energy that got mankind to the moon? Or are you going to rely on the energy that gets women raped? I mean, which force, which, which construct? mechanical thing are you going to rely on? Penis energy or, or intellectual energy? Which one wins this, this debate over what decides our fate, the idiot? But to presume that we aren't already being completely controlled by culture, evolution, um, and mechanical evolution, uh, the evolution of our circumstantial knowledge base, the evolution of these conversations in reality, the evolution of celebrity, Babe Ruth. These things are deciding our fate, shithead. And the argument is something better than that should be deciding our fate, shithead. In goodwill, but if that was the case, if that was the reality of human nature, 
And all it took is some empathy and goodwill. And then all, all these no, it doesn't take any empathy whatsoever. It takes a devotion and an understanding that reasoning and logic and information are the things that power fairness and good judgment and sensible solutions. That you just don't you just don't pretend you're an architect. You just don't pretend you're a rocket scientist. No, you actually have to do the work to be one. If you want to be somebody who solves problems, then you're going to have to spend some time working on problems. Fuck. This issue would, of life uh, wouldn't be there anyway. Uh, you know, people, some people, you can, uh, you know, make them feel uh, guilty about doing something so they won't do it. And yes, logic can change people's actions. Um, <clears throat> information can change their actions. That's how what happened to me. I mean, I lived the life in my youth that, oh, yes, well, they're just dumb animals. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Tasty, tasty, yum, yum. And then I found it impossible to keep evading the truth that I wasn't doing them any favor and I was, in fact, torturing them. And I was, in fact, a piece of shit for doing it. And that I was only doing it for my convenience. Not out of necessity, but out of convenience. So, yes, I was informed that I suck by my own observation of, my, uh, of, of, of the facts of reality. They just pointed at me and said, you suck. And you probably have to fix that. But it's not just that. That's not really uh, the core issue in, in all of these uh, moral issues. Is what's going to happen when you do something? Um, so, like with with these. <laughs> well, again, I, if you think the core issue is the is the outcome, well, then you know you're really not getting it. That the only way you can have uh, potential for outcomes is that you have to have you know garbage in, garbage out kind of thing. You have to have good stuff going in to have any hope of having a good result coming out. I mean, yes, you can accidentally do the right thing sometimes, but you can't rely on accidents, all right, happy accidents, uh, to get you through life, to get us through being productive. We're not going to get there that way. You don't win that way. Hope isn't power. Um, you know, first of all, you have to acknowledge... Obviously, there's going to be uh, suffering that happens from people being vegan. Whether you want to say that suffering matters or not, uh, what I mean by that is you could even say, "Oh, you know, the poor farmer with uh, you know with his cows and stuff, you know, he's going to suffer." Uh, and I can say um, I care more about the cow suffering than the farmer, but um, you know, and you can. Uh, well, yeah, I, I'm just saying, if, that, is that, if that's what you're going to rely on, that kind of nonsense, um, oh, this ending slavery is going to disrupt all those poor white people dependent on their slaves. Huh? What? So that's what you would show up 200 years ago? You would have showed up and made that argument? Well, well you can't stop slavery. We're all addicted to it. You can't stop it. No, 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 no. So, I mean, yeah, you're really not getting it then. And, and obviously there's a proportionality, okay? There's a difference between torture and inconvenience. And you, you just basically threw them on the same table. You just threw them both on the table and just said, no, I'm going to call them the same thing. Fuck you. Ultimately, though, it's just whatever disturbs you more. No, no, no. It's, it's how ultimately it is whether you can make a rational argument. Now, do you think it just made a rational argument in defense of farmers' rights uh, to torture animals? That's like saying Mengele has a right to torture Jews, idiot. I mean, that's what you just said, retard. That you can perceptually turn something into nothing, and then you can torture it all you fucking goddamn want. And then, if somebody threatens to stop you, you can complain that it'll inconvenience you. No, you're an idiot. No, it's not objective, as much as we want to say it's objective. And the whole reason we want to say... Well, well again, you, you can keep saying all you want that your consciousness isn't a real thing and that your welfare doesn't have real value. 
I'm never going to give you the right to say my welfare doesn't have real value. Fuck you. The minute you say that to me is the minute I say I'd like to defend myself in some sort of aggressive way against your overt threat to my welfare. Subjective isn't about trying to find truth. It's because you just want to be taken seriously. Well, I, I guess, I, I mean, really, if you're not about trying to find the truth, then I don't know what you're talking. Why are you even talking? Again, is, this is just so, it is so fucking stupid. You're, you're just such a noisemaker. You have no value to human progress whatsoever. You're just making noise. There's no truth to be discovered. There's no reality to understand. Fuck you. Yes, there is, dumbass. Objective, people take it less seriously. And I get that. Um, well, you can't take it at all seriously. If you say there's no fundamental reality to this concept of value, then yes, you're obligated not to take it seriously. If I actually believe that it was possible that torture doesn't mean anything, I mean, I can't even believe that it's even possible that it doesn't mean anything. So, so I mean, I can't even do the... It's possible that it doesn't mean anything, let alone have any confidence whatsoever that I'm quite sure it doesn't mean anything. And that's what you jackasses are saying. You're saying, I'm quite sure there's no right answer. Torture does not mean anything really. It's nothing. It's a goddamn pencil. It's a pen. It's nothing. Torture is nothing. Fuck you. Too stupid. So, I don't know, if you, if you think that saying your moral code is objective is going to result in better action for the things you want to happen, I guess, go for it. No, it's yeah. just rational. That's right. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to say it because it's just rational. I think there's a rational solution to your existence. It is not something reason has no power in. There are right answers and wrong answers, dumbass, just like there's good and bad in the fucking world, and it's goddamn fucking consequentially real. Stupid fuck. Um, but I guess I'm just, I'm annoyed, I'm just really annoyed by, um, so, so many people are, uh, I mean, you really think, you really think that the more intelligent we would get, the more we would diminish the value of consciousness, the more we would say it doesn't mean anything. How we feel, how comfortable we are, means less and less to us. You really think that would be the evolution of intelligence. Intelligence would find, the super mega intelligent would find consciousness meaningless. You really think that's the truth? That the more data and the more information you collected, you would think consciousness was more and more like a pen. So self righteous, so so offended uh, about things these days, and, and I can. Yeah, yes, I'm really offended by some asshole who says it's okay to torture me because I'm a pen. Yeah, I find that really, really, really fucking offensive, shithead. And anybody who understands anything about human history and how all the crap that's happened in human history only happened because some asshole was able to say it doesn't matter, they don't count. They're heathens. They're gypsies. Fuck you. Again, it's not that I never get offended. Actually, I just I get more angry over uh, people being hypocritical. Again, so that you wait till the end of the video. Well, let's get to the hypocr hypocrisy then. What's the hypocrisy in recognizing that other beings are sentient and their welfare is critically important? Exactly, where's hypocrisy in that? Um, and stuff. So, I wish I didn't. I wish I didn't care as much or didn't get. Angry. And, and when I get angry, it's not that I feel um uh, like moral outrage. It's, it's it's more I just I have this hang up when people are when people say stupid things that don't make sense. I just get fucking angry. And yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. Well, that's the that's only not, that, that that's that's the only thing we have in common because yeah, that's exactly how I feel about you. I think you're just an ignorant piece of shit. And you're just so fucking destructive to anything called intelligence or reason or logic. You're just a stupid, selfish cunt who hasn't done any real thinking at all. 
You haven't thought about this at all. You, like I said, you really believe that the smarter you would get, the more you would think intelligence and sensations and consciousness is penury. I wish I could change, or maybe I can change, but um, it's not this fake, righteous, indignant. even when someone does something that I think is morally uh, reprehensible, if someone is hurting an animal, um, I don't even think I need to say something like, oh, that is morally wrong, no, it's like, I want to fucking murder that guy, I hope someone fucking murders that guy, I think he's a fucking piece of shit, you know, <laughs> it doesn't have this, what do I need? Well, yeah, you do, you really do, though. Because if you go based on those emotions, those are the same emotions that allow people to say it's only a Jew or it's only a black man. You don't you understand the same positive feeling you're feeling towards some I'm going to protect fluffy kitty or fluffy dog is the same fucking rationale that has pig in the concentration camp because pig isn't as fun as a pet. You don't see this because cow isn't a good living room ornament. That's, that's why they're food. Is because we can't relate to them on some visceral, emotional level. And therefore, people just discount them and say they're not one of us. They're one of them. So the very energy you're expelling in your fucking cuteness argument. Well, it's so fucking cute. Don't you understand? As soon as you do this, it's so fucking cute. You're going to do the it's so fucking ugly. And that's the irrational part, shithead. argue that he's objectively wrong for kicking the puppy is that really important it's really important that you can defend yes when you're when you're going to make an argument that something's right or something's wrong and then you're going to interfere you have to be able to defend it with more than i feel like it you have to defend it by making the argument like hey it's not a stupid smelly a vagabond Jew or something. You say it's a sentient, clever organism of utility and value. It has integrity and dignity. And you can cause it harm. And its harm is as real as the harm manifested in your brain. You could even talk about the fact that there's a psycho killer standing right next to me. Is there any point in torturing the psycho killer? No. Unless it's going to prevent other psycho killers, there would be no point because the feelings it's going to have would be just as like torturing me. There's no different. Torture is torture. So yeah, you could make that argument. Stop doing that because torturing that thing is the same as torturing me, you jackass. Maybe you can't understand that, but it's a sentient fucking mind and it's going to experience torture, you fucking dumbass. And I know what torture is, and I know it shouldn't be experienced, not just by me, but by any brain. Dumbass. So yeah, you need to be able to make that argument. It's important that you can make that argument, and that your argument isn't something like, well, I want to fuck that chick. Yeah, that can't be your reason for saving one person and running over the other. No, it's only important maybe on YouTube where people like to fucking masturbate and never do anything. I'm not thinking of How about I guess another brilliant statement. So, you know, that's the kind of thing where you just want to say, Jesus Christ, could somebody please squash this fucking bug? Uh, talking is not doing anything. Arguing is not doing anything. No, these are only the fucking thing you exactly have to do before you can do anything. So, yeah, you're going to intervene in World War II in Germany. Don't talk about it. You either feel like it or you don't feel like it. Don't make any arguments in defense of it. Don't be rational or reasonable. No, just have an emotional reaction. And whatever your emotional reaction is, that's the correct answer. You can't see a problem with that. Dumbass. That, I, that I'm not just masturbating and, and, and doing anything, but... Uh, no, you're, you're not... Yeah, that's right. You're not even successfully masturbating. You're just jerking, and you're not getting off. Ugh. I'm, I'm not making a claim that... You're just playing with yourself. I'm above that. Uh, like I've said a million times in other videos in the past, um, I just acknowledge that that's what's going on. Well, again, you can say that's what's going on, and then you can admit that you're wasting your time. Uh, and, and you can basically, you're basically just outing yourself as saying, I'm an idiot 
and I can't help it. So go ahead and self-diagnose, okay? But I don't accept your diagnosis. I'm not an idiot, okay? And I do understand how things have to change. And they're not going to change because everybody shuts the fuck up, idiot. Guess what? That will change absolutely nothing guaranteed, jackass. I mean, you really are really stupid, right? I mean, you think World War II just got won. Nobody had to show up and get their nut shot off, right? Nobody had to sacrifice anything. No sons were killed. No brothers were killed. None of that happened. No one was burned alive on the deck of a ship. Fuck you. Um, even with vegans, like, you know, if you really believe, if, 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 I don't know you, but most vegans, if they really believe the things they say, like if they really saw it as being equal to like a Holocaust or whatever, I mean, then I think they're fucking cowards. They're cowards if they're not doing more. Um, if that's how they see it. They see it if, if, if you're having... Uh, uh, yeah, right. And the realistic demonstration of how it would make all the sense in the world for, let's say, Latvia or something to decide to go to war with ISIS all on its own, all by itself. Sure win, right? No doubt about it. They have the power. I mean, get real. The minute I have some sort of winning strategy as an individual, I'll apply it. But what's your example of success of this, these revolutions, jackass? What revolution have you been part of recently that succeeded, shithead? Man, you're really, you suck. And dinner with your, if you still have dinner with your family members that eat meat and you, and you think it's like a holocaust, or you just have to admit, yeah, you don't really care about holocaust so much, you know, you eat. Yeah, yeah, whatever, there's plenty of vegans who've said exactly that, that's right, that they, they can't stomach their own family anymore, and they've had to cut it off, so to speak, and you think that's easy and that's nothing? And, and really, in the context of all the social crimes that are taking place, all the, the horrors on this fucking goddamn planet, and you really are, you're just expecting somebody to put them in some sort of incredibly, to jeopardize their own security and safety by being labeled a terrorist, a threat. They should make themselves a threat so they can be thrown in Guantanamo Bay. Is that what they should do? Man, fuck you. You can kind of still chill with the Nazis uh, if it suits, you know, your... Well, exactly how are they chilling with them? So, again, that's a, just that's just such an ex a preposterous statement. They're basically whining. Other people call them whiners on the Internet. They're crying and begging that you stop being assholes, jackass. I don't think they're ha saying, I'm joining you, I'm having fun with you. No, they're saying there's been vegan, uh, vegans who have said, I think you should be shot. I think you should be shot. There, I'll say it too. I think you should be shot. That's what you deserve. You don't deserve anything else. If you got what you deserve, that's what you'd get. You're a heinous, evil torturer. You're a mangula against sentience. It's just a fact. I didn't make that a fact. You perpetrated the act, shithead. Just the truth. And now you're saying vegans are crazily hypocrisied because they recognize that, oh, okay, I get it. This is a cultural thing. People are raised to do this. They're raised with this mentality. And they're just having a problem breaking their addiction. And that maybe if I have a nice conversation with them, they'll understand someday. Maybe it'll just start working on them. The little gears will start turning and they'll say, yeah, what reason is there for me to do this? I don't have to do it. There are lots of other food choices. And if I can't completely eliminate meat from my diet, I certainly can take out most of it. Most of those meat meals are just uh, convenience meals. And just by taking a little shift of my eyeball, I can find something else yummy to eat. And you know it. So, and so a vegan is a hypocrite. If they say, okay, I understand, it's just a stupid addiction. It's not malicious. It's just stupid. It's just ignorant. You're fucking ignorant, ignorant, ignorant. And maybe I can fix that. Social media <clears throat> and, um, you know, whatnot. And that's the reality of what most people are like. You know, they, 
who don't, you know, if they were in Nazi Germany uh, during the Holocaust, they would just, you know, they would go along with it. Um, I, you know, pretty much everyone. Well, well, I'm just saying, you don't see any difference in the circumstances there. I mean, you really think if there was a military base next door to me or something and they were incarcerating animals, I'd do nothing? I mean, there's circumstances where you can realistically be um, capable of fighting a, a, a guerrilla war. And there's circumstances where it's just not possible. You're not going to win. You're going to get killed. And your cause is lost. A dead soldier isn't of any value to the cause, is it? No. So you have to try not to be a dead soldier. Um, but, yeah. uh, but I just think this is such a bullshit argument. Again, most of this stuff is about things that uh, people are not doing with the same malicious intent of Nazi Germany. And realistically, most of the Germans didn't have a malicious intent, right? It's following orders and such. There were some people who uh, risked their lives and so on, but those were in the minority. Yeah. Right, right. So you're just saying the majority of vegans should be more hostile, more aggressively antisocial. They should make themselves even more obnoxious to the majority, so the majority will do what? Look what, look what the majority has done to cigarette smokers, for fuck's sake. For minding their own business and doing something they enjoy. They've been taxed out of having a home even. I mean, thousands of dollars worth of tax a year just for smoking a cigarette. That kind of persecution. And that has nothing to do with having to imposing anything on them whatsoever. Cigarette smokers don't impose anything. They die quicker. They collect less Social Security. They collect less pension money. They're in every way were a total benefit to the social population. They made it possible for other people to live longer. Yes, they lived less, so other people could live longer because they paid their Social Security. They paid their medical expenses. They gave them an extra benefit. And what did they get for that? Persecuted like fuck. And you're suggesting that vegans should make themselves more obnoxious to the majority so the majority can persecute them. Yeah, fuck you. I'm not going to take your advice. Because you're a stupid fucking cunt. Okay. Huh, yeah, that was okay. Moderately fun. Ooh. 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 Christina. David <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. I broke it. And I miss Christina. Ooh. Hi. Uh, anyway. Oh, sorry, I'm having a subjective personal experience. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yes, totally meaningless as a philosophical event. Totally. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, till next time.